Edmund de Blessed, King of East Anglia, was one of the most noble servants of God. He was, however, also a humble and a virtuous man, who ruled as king with the teaching, if you are installed as a ruler, don't place yourself above men, but be among men. Be just like one of those peasants. Very humble indeed. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. Hello there. Forgive my intrusion, but don't forget to like and subscribe and especially comment, since your feedback would be much appreciated. Cheers! Eventually, however, the Danes came. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. They came to the shores of England with a navy, upon which was an army. They went on to plunder and slay throughout the land, as is their custom. In this fleet, the famous Viking chieftains Ivar and Ubi were united through the devil. When they landed their warships in Northumbria, they proceeded to destroy the country and slew its people. After they were done slaying and destroying, Ivar went southeast with his ships. And so Ivar came rowing to East Anglia. with his navy. Then Ivar suddenly invaded the country and slew its people, men, women and innocent children. Soon afterward he sent a message to King Edmund. Ivar, our king, who has dominion over many peoples, has now arrived in this country. He commands that you share your hidden gold hoards and your ancestral possessions with him straight away. And that you become his vessel king if you want to stay alive. We suggest you take this offer, since you don't have the forces to resist him. King Edmund summoned a certain bishop with whom he was most intimate. and deliberated with him how he should answer the fierce Ivar. I say, submit, my king, I don't want to see any harm come to you. Alas, bishop, the poor people of this country have already come to much harm. I would rather die fighting so that my people might keep their native land. Alas, my king, thy people lie slain. You do not have the men to be able to fight. Rather save your life by flight. See what I did there? I made a little, little rhyme. <laughs> I don't wish to be the only survivor after my subjects were slain in their beds by these Vikings. It was never my way to flee. I would rather die for my country if I need to. God knows I will never turn from him. If I die, I live. In truth, you deserve to be killed now. But I will not defile my clean hands with your vile blood, because I follow the example of Christ. Go now quickly and tell your fierce lord, never in this life, will King Edmund submit to Ivar the heathen war leader, unless he first submits to our saviour Christ. Then the messenger went to Ivar and gave him King Edmund's answer. Seize this king who refuses my command. When Ivar arrived in King Edmund's hall, the king threw out his weapons. Ivar then bound Edmund and beat him with rods. Afterwards, he led the king to a firm tree, tied him there with strong bonds, 
and beat him with whips. In between the whip lashes, Edmund kept calling out his belief in Christ. Because of this, the heathens became furiously angry. So they started to throw spears at him as if it was a game. Until he was entirely covered with their missiles, like the bristles of a hedgehog. Edmund, however, kept on calling to Christ. And so, as a last resort to silence him, Ivar ordered Edmund, beheaded. And so his soul journeyed happily to Christ. When the Vikings returned to their ships, they hit the head of the holy Edmund in the thick brambles, so that it could not be buried with the rest of his body. A while after the Vikings had left, the local people who were left alive came to the place where their lord's body lay without his head. They were all very sad because of their king's passing, especially because they didn't have the head for his body. But luckily someone had seen that the Vikings had carried the head to the nearby woods and hid it there. They all went to the woods, looking everywhere, through the bushes and brambles, to see if they could find the head. Aside from searching, the people also called out to the head, as is their custom when someone is lost in the woods. Where are you, Mr. Head? Over here! They carried the holy head back to the settlement, thanking God for all his miracles. The people then buried the head together with the body and erected a marker over him. After many years, when peace returned to their lands, they also erected a church worthy of the saint at his burial site, since there were a lot of miracles happening near the grave. When they carried the holy body of Edmund to the church, they noticed that his body was clean, unscathed, and his head and body were reunited. There was only a red silk thread around his neck that could show how he was slain. They laid Edmund there, thus uncorrupted, where he awaited resurrection and eternal glory. <laughs>